Hello <laughs> to all of our listeners out there. <laughs> this is another episode of the Daddy Dialogues. I am Daddy Fields here. I'm Daddy Ethan, Dr. Ethan Hamovich. And I'm very happy to announce that we actually have two guests today. Yay! Wow. Woo. Yes. So we have the privilege of having baby Chris Hello. and Benji with us today. Hello. Hi. Choo. <laughs> How are you both doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you for joining the, the podcast. How about you, Benji? We're doing we're doing pretty well. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's it's super exciting to have you because um you're gonna offer us some insight into uh perspective that we don't really get stories that we don't really get told here uh, often enough. And I think that when Daddy Fields and I speculate about like what it's like for you know, our folks, it's usually from our point of view. Right. And, um, and we usually also, like paint ourselves in a kind of a corner where we're like, yeah, this is speculation, but it would just be better just to ask, you know, people directly. Hence why we have two guests yeah. today. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able so to answer you. all the questions that you have. Yeah. No pressure. No pressure. Um, so what, I mean, from your point of view, what are your observations and experiences as young ABDLs today? I think everybody will be eager to hear. I think because I was caught on the edge of generations, um, you know, from the people who were born in the 80s and such back, and then like Ben, the people who were born in the 2000s forward, I'm kind of caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. I kind of saw both halves a little. Like, mm -hmm. I saw, you know, the little bit of uh, forums and the small talk hidden in little backroom chats and stuff grow into mm -hmm. what is now in my observations, a growing and lively uh, group community um, mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. around the world. And we're all just trying to be our own happy little selves or daddy selves, whatever the case may be to the person. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's really cool watching the growth from little mm -hmm. to nothing to now there is so much um, stuff out there that new people like like Benji can get information. He can talk to other people like him. He can mm -hmm. see pictures and stuff from the community that I didn't get growing up. And that's actually funny enough. I recommended your podcast to him as like, hey, these are two daddies talking about your community. Listen in on them. Maybe you'll learn something, you know, things like that. Um Appreciate the shout out, baby. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> but, it, but I'm being serious. It's like, I'm like, he, I know he's so super new. And he and he, he has an abundance of resources he can go to from multiple social medias to podcasts mm -hmm. and everything. Because to me, I think, and this is just opinion, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think the ABDL community is growing and eventually may be mainstream more accepted mm -hmm. yeah than Agreed. it what than it was when i was little or totally. <laughs> no i i can i absolutely agree with you baby chris because i mean i i'm a little bit older but than you not by much like maybe two years but i was also when i was growing up um like i, I think it was called like bigbaby.org and it was just like uh just photos of older men in diapers. And that was my first real connection with the community. Um, but it was very limited to just sites. Yeah, we had some um, some like more social media oriented things like ab.com and are you padded? But um, mm -hmm. I would say definitely within like the last 10, 15 years, like the community is just like exploded. Like you, like oh, yeah. you mentioned, you have like so many ways to connect. Like there's 
they're having um, ABDL events at uh, probably I would say probably almost every like um, larger city in the mm-hmm. U.S. And Definitely. I'm just really impressed and just how much um the community has accelerated in these last few years yeah definitely uh, a lot more sites and stuff available because like i said I, I think the first two sites i remember uh diaperboys.com and a disc yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's were... more yeah i remember that because i would uh i would sometimes look at the forums on that yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely more forms and then now i've looked at things going things have grown so much and it's just great. And it's like, I can actually, now that I'm a little bit more secure in my own little self and accepting myself. And that's a big thing for yeah. ABDL people. Um, and even daddies, you, you got to accept yourself. Sure. It ain't mm-hmm. easy. Mm-hmm. And it's a, sometimes a bit of a road. Cause I'll fully admit I had, you know, the binge and purge the back, you know, things like that have happened to me in, in my journey as an AB. But I think as long as you are true to yourself and it, it just makes things a, he- a lot easier in being your own authentic self. Definitely. Yes. What a smart baby you are. <laughs> Autism for the win. It's called info dumping. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate it. Thank you, baby Chris. Benji. Well, on the op, what? Well, on the opposite side of the spectrum of that, where I am growing, like he said, growing up in a world where it is more readily access- accessible to learn about this community and people in this community. Uh, now it's just a matter of looking for. Um, the right information because you have to find places that will give you accurate information because there are a lot of places that yeah. just give you like, well, I, I've, I've run into a couple of those and I'm like, well, that doesn't seem right. As somebody in the community, I'm like that doesn't seem quite right, but everybody has examples? their own experiences. Um, yeah. Let me see. There's there's this one where um, I I see people will just um, like kind of one, not one, really a site. I don't actually remember the site off the top of my head right now, okay. but I, all I remember is like. They're saying they're like an A B, mm-hmm. but they don't actually wear um, diapers. They'll, I mean, they'll wear them just on their mm-hmm. head. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is everybody has their. Um, I know it's like a whole range of things, but I'm just mm-hmm. like, is that really considered an adult baby at that point? My observation of uh, that on Twitter has been that, yeah, you usually it's ABDLs who are uh, engaging in that kind of play. And I think, you know, it's because these dudes love the smell and they want to experience that in a very sensual way. Mm-hmm. And this is just my understanding of it. Uh, I haven't ever engaged with that in like IRL, uh, only on Twitter, but uh, I my understanding is that it's just a very sensual uh, experience and it's a turn on. I see that. Interesting. Your, um, uh, your puppy side, Benji, definitely gets a little bit sniffy himself. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, he has a pup side um, and he gets a little sniffy. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I want to know you guys is about the, you know, what would your, your like hopes are for the community and for yourselves in the community? 
Well, me personally, I just hope that it uh, there's a lot. Event eventually, I hope there's a lot less like stigmatism towards mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Stigma. wearing diapers, mm-hmm. because for a lot of people, me included, I uh, um I can see that we will get uncomfortable and will be afraid to actually express ourselves in that way Mm -hmm. just because we're afraid for um being made fun of or whatever have you it's resonates big time yeah i i agree with benji i i think i'm also looking forward to the stigma stigmatization of wearing diapers and or expressing yourself as a little is kind of frowned upon or seen as other. And I think, frankly, in the future, just by seeing what growth has happened in my own little life, I I see it hopefully getting to that point where it's more mainstream and more people are more accepting. And, you know, for myself, what do I want to see in the future? Well, yeah. hopefully I, I get to find my daddy. That That's what I want to find. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. w- I would like to have found a daddy that will be mine forever and I his forever kind of a thing mm-hmm. um, you know at some point I wish that uh, other than that I just want to keep seeing the community growing I just want to see them continuing to help and to support others like them like they usually do you know helping the new mm-hmm. people get integrated kind of a thing for lack of mm-hmm. a better word uh, mm-hmm. It's just great, and I just I, I want to see the community thrive and grow. Mm. Yeah, one thing I've always wanted for us in general is to, I mean, not in a formal way, but I mean, there has to be more of a culture of. I would love to see more of a culture of mentorship and engagement with Indian generations. You know, as we're starting to do here today, like what. Mm. I mean, my perspective on this and and even putting this episode together was like, you know, there's such a fear among ABDL men in general, and and I'm sure women as well, uh, but ABDL folks about who are my age and older and uh, even in the 30s, you know, I think there's a fear of engaging younger members of our community, not only uh, in the younger 20 range, but also 18-ish and younger, we need to yeah. find a way to uh, engage the community in ways that are age-appropriate and uh, I think in ways that is, is like helping people understand who they are and navigate this world that is so vast and that like really cuts you off. Uh, like everybody has an experience before age 18 of like exploring this. It doesn't have to be you know, sexualized necessarily. There's so much of this has nothing to do mm-hmm. with that. So I think there's got to be a way to engage, you know, young people in this experience that is safe and healthy and, and encouraging and inspiring. Uh, Definitely. The full age, age spectrum. Uh, yeah. And, and I wish there wasn't as much fear uh, in members of our community about, around doing that. I agree with you, uh, Daddy Ethan, because I know growing up with the isolation I experienced and being alone and feeling alone, having a support system and having a mentor system, just, you know, I know, you know, even for daddies that y'all need experience and talk amongst yourselves. Us littles, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of us, and I know a lot of us could have used a lot of the mentorship and maybe not necessarily just being a better baby f- for our future daddies or caregivers or whatever. Oh, I don't know how important that is, of course. <laughs> yeah, but it's to also help us grow and be comfortable with ourselves. And Absolutely. I know if I was, you know, had a helping hand growing up, I, I probably would have been in the compu- into the community and more out putting myself into the ABD world sooner than I did due to my upbringing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. There, there has to be a space, I think, for dudes who 
of any age to like engage in this experience and this identity. Um, you know, putting on diapers is not something that is necessarily sexual. Uh, it doesn't have to be feared uh, in terms of uh, like legal issues or whatever. I think mm-hmm. what we need to do is think about how we can approach these concerns and experiences in a way that is reasonable, age appropriate, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, what's the word for it? Uh, engaging. I mean, and, and it builds community. Like there, there should be a space, especially for dudes who are under 18 to gather by themselves, maybe even to yeah. mentor each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, um, you know, that's one way of looking at it, but I mean, there's infinite ways of doing this. I just we're afraid to even talk about it. So, um, yeah, agreed. It's, it's, I think it's, something that would help is that I think, and you mentioned this baby Chris and you mentioned this, um, Ethan, but in terms of becoming potentially mainstream, I think the community at one at some point in order for that to happen is going to have to start forming strong relationships with, you know, just the vanilla um, mm-hmm. community just in general, because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of this precaution is coming from fear of how they're like, we're, I think we're all okay with it. I think there are probably mm-hmm. multiple people who understand that. Like, yeah. If we can reach people, about this younger and you know of course it's not sexual and it's all educational i think people would be Uh advocating for that but they're just afraid of how the general public is going to perceive that agreed yeah i know definitely because growing up like like i said even though i was isolated growing up in the deep south in the bible belt of our country in the u.s i could have really used others like me my age to have someone to talk to and explain like, Hey, Mm -hmm. what about you? You know, what do you think about diapers? What do you think about? Have you had dreams about being, you know, cared for? I've had them. Am I alone? You know, and that would have been huge. Yeah. Isolation is one of the biggest uh, issues that we all struggle with. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, you know, as daddies, as babies, as DLs, just uh, from a young age to even adulthood, because I think even in um, you know your forties, you can whether you're just coming out and experiencing this for the first time, or whether this is something that you've done for a very very long time, it's so hard to connect with others. Uh, it takes a lot of work uh, mm-hmm. who are like you and who experience this as well, and um, to engage around it especially if you're not in a big city where they have all the events. So um, it, it's tough. It's tough. I agree. Yeah. I think that's a, that's an episode <laughs> in of <Yep>. itself. <laughs> Thank you. Cause I do believe, I, I agree with you, Ethan. I think there is a way to do it. Um, I do think a large, uh, to, to make it successful as I do think that we do need to start making relationships and, you know, making ourselves more well known to the general public. Mm. Um, I think that will be the scariest, yeah. the hardest part. But if we can get past that, I think all of our other initiatives will become much easier. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, um, if you, if you, but thank you both um, for coming on to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm doing the outro and. You're... I didn't tell you to do the outro. Okay, you gotta wait, man. I need a cue to do the outro, Ben <laughs> Fields. I'm going to do the outro. Okay, then you do it. Okay. I'm Daddy Ethan. (laughs) And I am Daddy Fields. Thank you again, baby Chris and Benji, for for having, for um, joining us today on on this today. Yeah, can't talk on today's episode. Thank you for having us. It was wonderful having you. And thank you again for the invite. Farewell, I'll be to saying goodbye. A two, a two, to you and you and you. Exactly. Yes. All right. Thank you, guys. No problem. Bye. Bye.